So hello there, everybody. Glad to be back with you today. And um, we've been doing a lot recently with uh, breathing. <clears throat> the pollens are still kind of high. The, the grass pollen is still a little bit high out there. So we're going to continue to focus a little bit more on the breath um, in this um, session as we have in previous ones. So I'm going to ask you to come right up close to the front edge of your chair. And hopefully you're sitting in a chair that doesn't have any um, arms on the side and that isn't like too uh, low or too cushy. You want to have a little bit of support um, underneath your sitting bones. So a, I, I've got a, a folding chair here, so a nice hard metal surface, and then I put a cushion on top. So I've got that a, a little bit of um, uh, comfort for um, sitting for a bit. So look down at your feet and see if you can get your feet kind of in a nice alignment. So the toes facing forward, if that's possible and then maybe oh about four to six inches between your feet um, and your heels probably likely right underneath your knees now for some folks um, if you don't have that level of flexibility in the knee um, you might just have one uh, foot out a little bit farther or both feet out a little bit farther so this should be a fairly comfortable position for people if it's not working for you make any kind of adjustment that you need to do <clears throat> and then let your hands rest on your lap on your legs somewhere on your thighs and have your palms facing down and then spread out your fingers a little bit so we're engaging those fingers and then relax them in that kind of spread out position so in other words just kind of open them up and then just let them sort of relax now as you relax your fingers i'm going to ask you to relax the muscles in your arms so the forearm area the upper arm relax the shoulders so let your shoulders kind of come away from your ears Relax your neck and your jaw. If your teeth are uh, together, kind of uh, in contact, see if you can create a little space so that your upper teeth and lower teeth have a little bit of distance between them. <clears throat> and notice your tongue. Is your tongue kind of engaged up at the roof of your mouth? Can you relax your tongue and let it just rest in the bottom of your mouth? And now notice if you're leaning forward a little bit, Oftentimes we lean forward or we tilt the chin up a little bit slightly like this. So we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you to lean back slightly. So you're more on the back edge of your sitting bones and then have your chin, <clears throat> imagine you have a, a grapefruit underneath your chin. So you just wanna have enough tension there that you're holding that grapefruit. Um, as opposed to if you tried to have like a plum under there, you'd have your chin right down on your chest. So we wanna just kind of be holding a little bit of a grapefruit there underneath the chin. So now that engages those neck muscles again. So can you hold the grapefruit and relax your neck muscles? Whew. Okay, now that we have the physical body sort of in hand, we know uh, what we're doing, where we are in space, we're gonna shift attention to the breath. And just notice the way your body is breathing right now. You don't have to change anything about your breath. Watch the air as it moves in and out. If you can breathe in and out through your nose. If you're having difficulty getting air in or out that way, you can breathe in maybe through your nose. You might uh, do a little auxiliary breathing through your mouth as well, but try and breathe in through your nose. And you can always breathe out through pursed lips like you're blowing out a candle. So that pursed lips breathing, what that does is it helps to get the carbon dioxide out of your lungs a little bit more quickly. And it also helps the, <clears throat> the little sacs in your lungs. Um, when we breathe out, those little sacs kind of deflate um, and they compress. When you breathe out through pursed lips, it makes that compression a little bit less. So it actually keeps your, um, the little alveoli, the little sacs a little more um, open. <clears throat> Excuse me. So breathing in and breathing out. We're deepening the breath now with every breath in. See if you can take in a little bit more air, allow your belly and your rib cage to expand as you inhale and let your belly and rib cage gently contract as you exhale. Breathing in and breathing out. We're doing this in a really conscious way now. So if you'd like, you can close your eyes if you haven't already done that, some of you are right into your breathing with your eyes closed and focused on that for others. Perhaps you're still 
a little distracted by things that are going on in the house or things that are going on in your own body. So see if you can just get rid of those distractions, perhaps by closing your eyes. And as you breathe in and out, I'm gonna ask you to direct your attention to your chest, right below your collarbones. See if you can breathe in a way that you can feel movement here. And it might take several breaths for some of us to be able to breathe deeply enough to feel movement this high up in the body. This can be a little bit tricky to feel that particular area. And I know all of you are professional breathers, You've been doing this a long time. As you're inhaling and exhaling, focusing on that space below the collarbones, in the upper part of the rib cage. Inhaling and exhaling, expanding and contracting. Now, if you're creating tension in your arms, your hands, your neck or shoulders in order to feel that movement in the upper part of your chest, I'm gonna ask you to let go of that tension. Even if that means you're having a hard time feeling that upper chest. So it's always a little bit of a balance, always a little bit of a dance to release the tension in the body and create movement using the breath. And as you're breathing, notice what's going on in the mind. Notice your thoughts. And notice if your thoughts are many or few, if they're moving quickly or slowly, or maybe you've got a thought that's a little bit stuck. And try to just observe the thoughts without making any judgment about it, without trying to change or control it, just sort of witnessing and observing. And at the same time, you're witnessing your breath, breathing deeply in and breathing deeply out. Thoughts will come and go. Thoughts may get a little bit stuck. Notice as you're witnessing your thoughts, if you've started to create a little bit more tension in your body, your hands, your arms, your shoulders, your neck, your jaw. And see if you can let go of that tension. So we're just sort of moving from the body, the physical body to the breath and to the mind. We just kind of move back and forth. So move to the breath now. Notice if you're feeling movement in those upper collarbone areas. Notice if the breath is smooth and round, if it's shallow or deep, if it's fast or slow. And shift attention back to the mind, the thoughts. Noticing if the thoughts are moving, if there's any that are stuck, if the thoughts are many or few, and the quality of your thoughts. Are they deep? Are they philosophical? Are they shallow, which most of our thoughts are, like laundry list items? That's not real deep thinking, but it occupies an awful lot of our mind space. And now see if you can hold in your awareness simultaneously the condition of your body, your breath, and your mind. So you're noticing your thoughts, you're noticing your breathing, and you're noticing tensions in the body. You're sort of splitting your awareness between those three.
And let's take one more deep breath in together. We'll let it out with a sigh. And then you can transition back to your natural breath. Let your eyes gently open. Take your hands off your lap, stretch your arms up overhead, reach up through your hands, reach through the right side and the left side and stretch like you're waking up. So just kind of moving a little from side to side. Stretching out through the underarm, through the rib cage, and go a little bit farther from side to side each time you stretch. Try and keep your sitting bones equal and even on the chair though. So if you're leaning to one side and you feel the other sitting bone coming up off the chair, that means you're leaning from your hips. So I want you to lean from your waist. So we're keeping the sitting bones even. Good, and one more time on each side. So we're just kind of reaching up and stretching and then drop the arms down. We're gonna take the arms and press forward. And as you do, bring your chin to your chest and round through your spine. And then as you next inhale, we're going to sweep the arms down. We're going to squeeze the shoulder blades together, open up through the chest, lift the chin ever so slightly, and then exhale, and we're going to come forward and round. So we're going to do this a few times, breathing in, we're arching the back and bringing the arms behind, and breathing out, we're bringing the arms forward and rounding through the spine. Breathing in and breathing out. Nice long, slow breaths here. Easy movement for the spine. So if you're lifting your chin way up, try not to lift it too, too far up because we don't want to shorten the back of the neck just to get length in the front of the neck. And just one more time with the whole spine involved. And we're gonna finish with an extension. So that means the back is arching, breathing in and breathing out. And then slowly come back to sort of a neutral position. Place your hands on your thighs with your fingers facing in and walk your feet a little bit wider than hip distance. So that's gonna be uh, somewhere between 20 and 24 inches apart for most of us. Okay, so with your toes facing forward, if you can, we're gonna lean forward, we're gonna hinge forward from the hips. So if you take your hands, slide them from um, down here by your knees and bring your hands right up into the creases of your hips. So the, this is the saddle of your hand, right? Where the first finger and the thumb come together, you're gonna put the saddle of your hand right in there. So you're just kind of resting. And that's where you wanna feel movement. So as I lean forward, my spine is nice and long and I can feel the, um, the movement is happening right down there because it's compressing where my hands are and then I'm gonna come back up. So we're just leaning forward and coming back up. And as you come forward, put a little more weight in your legs and your feet. So you can feel your legs and feet kind of working here. Breathing in and breathing out. Good, and you can breathe in and out as you like. Um, I like to breathe out as I come forward and breathe in as I come back, but that might not work for you. So you wanna honor your body, what works for you. Great. So now you can keep that movement going, but slide your hands down to right above your knees and see if you can come a little farther forward and then press into your hands and straighten your arms. So now we're gonna put a little bit more weight in the arms and hands. So it's like we're doing a little bit of a push up here, right? So I know your back is strong enough to be able to lift you up, but see if you can push into your hands and let your arm muscles work. And at the top of this, we're straightening the arms. So we're really kind of engaging those arm muscles as fully as we can. Let's just do two more of these. So breathing in and breathing out. Excellent. Great. Excellent. And then we'll relax that and walk your feet back a little closer together. Let's take the right leg and extend it out. Have your heel on the floor and we're gonna move the toes. So squeeze and extend the toes and look down at that foot. Notice what it's doing this morning, how it's, how it's functioning. If all those joints feel pretty good or if you've got a couple of joints there that don't feel so good. And then we'll point and flex the foot. And as you point and flex the foot, let's make sure we maintain a nice straight spine. So we're sitting up really tall, engaging the muscles here in the thigh, engaging those abdominal muscles a little bit. And then let's start to circle at the ankle. So we're circling around and around. You can do this with your heel on the floor, especially if you've got some issues with your hip or your leg or your knee. And reverse direction. 
Great, and then we'll bring the heel to the floor and let's rotate the whole leg in and out. So keeping the knee straight, we're rotating the whole leg from way up here. If you take the saddle of your right hand and place it up in that hip crease again, you'll be able to feel the rotation. So the muscles there are working and that upper leg bone, the femur, is actually rotating in the hip socket as we do this. So this gets a little more juice into that joint, which is what we like. Great, and then we'll have that uh, foot so that the toes are straight up. And now take your hands alongside your hips. So just kind of resting here on the chair. This keeps the spine in integrity. If I have my hands here, I can feel that I'm kind of hunching forward a little bit. With the hands there, I can better align myself. Now pull the belly muscles in a bit, and then we're going to bend and extend that knee. And you're going to bend that knee so that you bring your foot as far under the chair as you can. Now, some of us are working with a little bit of limitation here, and that's okay. So we go, only go back as far as feels comfortable, maybe on that edge of comfort, right? So comfortable, comfortable range um, can actually include a certain level of discomfort. It should never include a painful feeling or sensation. And there's a difference there because discomfort means, yeah, I haven't done this for a while. It's kind of tight or it's a little sore, a little achy. And pain means, wow, this is really not good for my body, so I'm going to stop. Now, the next time that you bring your foot underneath, however far under it is, you're going to hold it there and see if you can lift your heel up, right? And you're really stretching the toes a little bit here. And then relax that leg a little bit. See if you can bring the heel closer to the floor. So we're lifting the heel up and we're bringing the heel down toward the floor. And once again, your foot is, if you can get way underneath your chair, that's great. I'm uh, on this side, I'm gonna be maybe just a little bit behind my knee, which is an improvement for me, but it's not as quite the range that I'm used to on the other side. So I'm still working with this and I'm lifting and lowering, stretching the calf, stretching the uh, leg a little bit here. We'll do that just one more time, lifting and lowering. Great, okay, and now relax that a little bit. We're gonna lean back slightly, and as we lean back slightly, you should feel a little bit more engagement in the belly muscles here. We're gonna engage the muscles in the leg and extend the leg out. So holding the leg out, we're breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. So the muscles here in the thigh are working right around the knee. Now let's add a little complexity to this. Let's see if we can rotate the leg in and out while it's raised in the air this high, right? If at any time this is too much, you can always drop the heel back down to the floor like we did at the beginning. Just see if you can keep your legs straight. If you can, let's see if we can do three more times rotating from way up here, right? So way up in the, um, in the hip, if you take the saddle of your hand and just kind of gently place it up there, you might feel that. So I think that's four rotations and five. Good, and then we're just gonna extend that leg down. So we're still keeping that leg extended. Toes are reaching toward your shin, and then make sure your left heel is underneath your left knee. We're gonna place both hands on that left thigh, and keeping the back nice and straight, we're gonna come forward, like you're trying to bring your belly onto your thigh, and then we're gonna come all the way back up. Now you can push into your hands. Again, if you'd like to do a little bit more work for the upper arms and the shoulders, Use the muscles in your arms to push yourself back up. Breathing in and breathing out. Looks good, everybody. Next time that you come forward, you're gonna hold here. Keep breathing, so don't hold your breath while you're here. Take your right hand and slide it down your leg. See if you can reach toward your ankle, maybe toward your toes. Maybe you can even grab your toes, some of you. Or maybe they're so far away, you just gotta kinda look at them, give them a little wave, let them know you're there. Couple more breaths in and out. And then let's bring that right hand back to the knee near the left one and then push into both hands and slowly come all the way up. Good, let's bend that knee and bring the feet about six inches apart. Place your hands on your thighs, close your eyes for a moment. Breathing in and breathing out. I want you to notice if your right knee feels a little higher than your left knee. So in other words, if the lower part of your right leg feels a little bit longer, so that would translate into that knee feeling like it's a little bit higher on this side. 
and then let your eyes open. We're gonna take the left leg, extend it out, have the heel on the floor, and we're gonna squeeze and extend those toes. Squeeze and extend the toes. And notice how the toes work on this side, if the joints are feeling the same as the other side or if they're a little bit different. And we'll start to point and flex. And as you point and flex, notice your posture. Make sure your posture is nice and tall. Good, and your breath is smooth and round. So uh, when I say a smooth round breath, what I mean is that the air flows in and out and there isn't a place where you, you kind of uh, hitch your breath or where you hold your breath at all. And then start to circle at the ankle. And again, all of this can be done with the heel on the floor, especially if that feels like it's too much, if you've got a hip or a leg or a knee problem here, um, just honor that, reverse the direction. If you've been going in one direction, you wanna circle around the other way. And then let's bring that heel right back down to the floor with a nice straight, strong leg. Take the saddle of your left hand and place it right up there in that hip crease. And then we're gonna rotate that left leg in and out. So if you look at your foot, your foot is going from big, so big toe side to little toe side. So it's like a big windshield wiper. And if you pay attention to that sensation underneath your left hand, you'll feel the rotation. So those are, you're feeling kind of muscles moving there and you're feeling the rotation of the leg bone in the hip socket through the tissue, right? So you're feeling that tissue there and it's moving in and out. It's a good way to warm up the hips a little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna bring that foot so it's, um, reaching straight up toward the ceiling. Now take your hands alongside your hips on your chair. Once again, make sure your back is nice and straight and you're sitting up nice and tall and you're breathing evenly in and out. And we're gonna bend and extend this knee. So same thing that we did on the other side, really slowly. As you extend, squeeze those muscles in that upper thigh right above the knee. So you can feel the, the kneecap actually um, being pulled up a little bit, right? So when your thigh muscles are strong, what happens is when you straighten your leg, that kneecap lifts and pulls up a little bit. And that's what keeps your kneecap healthy. It keeps your knee healthy, right? So you don't get an erosion of the nice cartilage in there. So the next time that you bend your knee, we're gonna bring that foot underneath the chair, right? So now you're up on your toes a little bit. And then you're gonna bring your heel down toward the floor and lift up onto your toes and then heel down to the floor. Now, again, you can bring your foot underneath the chair quite a ways, or you can bring it underneath a, you know, um, less. You might notice a difference from side to side. I know for myself, um, the first side, um, I don't, still don't have quite the range that I have in my uh, second side here. And so this side is, um, you know, it's back a little bit farther. But I have to say the side that um, didn't get back as far, I felt it a lot more in that leg because I was really working some tissue in there that needs to be worked. This leg is just kind of having fun with it. So just a couple more. Good, all right. And then once again, with the hands here on the chair, we're gonna lean back slightly till you feel your belly muscles activate a bit. And we're gonna extend that leg. So straighten the knee. That means these muscles here in the thigh, the upper part of the leg are really strong and working. And we're gonna rotate the whole leg in and out, just like we did when we had the foot on the floor. If again, if you're working with a, uh, uh, some limitation here or something that just doesn't feel right, you can have your heel back on the floor. But if you can, if it's possible, Let's see if we can keep the leg um, lifted, the foot lifted up off the floor for five more rotations. And you can even bring the saddle of your hand into that hip there to see what you feel, right? So that's three and two and last one. Looks great, everybody. Let's drop that <clears throat> foot back down right alongside the other one, kind of line up your feet a little bit. And then place your hands on your thighs right above your knees. Close your eyes. Take a couple of breaths in and out. Hmm. And hopefully what you notice is that your right knee and left knee feel like they're the same height at this point. So hopefully we have uh, uh, the same amount of space. We've created a good amount of space in the joints in both legs. All right, so let your eyes drift open. Great, and take your hands off of your lap. We're gonna work the fingers now, squeezing and extending fingers, just like we did with the toes. <clears throat> I'm a big fan of working these little joints in the body because we don't often do it in a way that's kind of freeing. Um, we work these a lot when we're doing computer work or um, 
knitting, crocheting, sewing, you know, those kinds of, um, those kinds of activities, crafts, painting, drawing, um, anything that requires us to use our hands and hold an instrument or hold a position creates tension in the hands and fingers. And, you know, you have little muscles in your fingers that don't get to work out in this nice, gentle way. So let's do this. Let's start to circle at the wrists. All right, and just notice what your wrists feel like this morning, if they're nice and free and loose, or if they're a little tight and reverse direction. I'm noticing a difference. My right wrist and my left wrist do not feel the same this morning. They feel a little different. Okay, and then we're gonna take the palms of the hands together. And so let your fingers all touch so your the opposing fingers are all in contact and the heels of your hands right down here where the where the wrist kind of stops and the hand begins. We're going to keep the heels of the hands together. Don't let them come apart. And we're going to bring the hands down. See if you can get them down as low as they'll go. Now keep pressing the heels of the hands together and lift your elbows up, but don't lift your shoulders up. Right. All right, let's try that again. Let's, we'll start from the beginning because that was a lot of instruction for one movement. So with the palms together and the heels of the hands together, we're gonna draw the hands down toward the belly button as far as they'll go. Lift the elbows slightly, but don't lift the shoulders and breathe. Nice, slow, steady breath in and out. Okay, continue to breathe in this round fashion. And as you do, we're gonna create a little movement here with the arms. So let's keep the palms and the hands together and lift up, see if you can bring your elbows close as you lift your hands way up overhead and then come all the way down, bring the elbows apart, palms of the hands stay together right into the heels. So I'm just breathing in and out normally and smoothly, not trying to time the movement in the breath at all. There's no need to do that, we're just, Kind of going at a nice, easy, steady pace. Good, and we're noticing which way feels easier. So is it easier to keep your the heels of your hands together as you come down, or is it easier to um, get the elbows close together as you come up? Okay, just two more of these. Great, and last one. Excellent. Okay, let's take the palms away from each other. We're going to bring the arms out to the sides and have your palms facing down to start. Now reach out through your right fingertips and your left fingertips and drop your shoulders away from your ears. So keep reaching out through your fingertips and we're going to turn the palms forward and all the way up toward the ceiling. Breathing in, breathing out, and then we're gonna turn the palms forward again and all the way down to the floor and see if you can turn them around behind you so the palms are reaching behind you. So there's this rotation in the shoulders. We're gonna continue this movement, just rotating. You can see the right arm and the left arm. You can look out on your own arms and notice how the whole arm is rotating. Now this is a lot like what we just did with the leg, right? Where we rotate that whole leg like a big um, windshield wiper. It's kind of the same thing. We're trying to work the shoulder joint. And when we do that with the leg, we're trying to work the hip joint. And our hip joints and our shoulder joints, they share some similarities in how they're constructed. Um, and so in the hip, we tend to get a little bit tighter there. We get a little more restricted. In the shoulder, we tend to be a little more vulnerable because the shoulder joint is not quite as stable as the hip joint. So just a couple more of these rotations. Great. And we're going to finish with the palms facing up toward the ceiling. Let's see if we can reach out through the fingers again, palms facing up toward the ceiling. Now look out over your right arm and your left arm and make sure your upper arms are parallel to the floor. In other words, they're not way down here. Keep them as high as you can. If it's too much, you can have them down a little bit. And then we're going to bend the elbows and tap the shoulders and extend. And again, we're just using that nice round breath. Good. Keeping those arms strong, right? So as you come in, keep those elbows lifted, you guys. As your arms come in, squeeze these muscles a little bit. Those are your biceps muscles. Just a couple more of these. Great. And the next time that you have your hands on your shoulders, 
we're gonna switch and we're gonna go up overhead. So push up overhead and then come all the way down and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Keep your palms forward. Go up overhead and down behind you, squeezing those shoulder blades, breathing in and breathing out. <clears throat> so we're working the elbows still and we're working the shoulders a bit and we're working those shoulder blades, which get a little bit stuck back there. Great, and one more time all the way up and down. Excellent, and then we're gonna let the arms come back around, let the hands rest on the lap, close your eyes for a moment, take a breath in, let it out with a sigh. <sighs> Notice your arms and shoulders. Okay, let's take the um, right arm, we're gonna sweep it across the body, and we're gonna pull on that upper arm over to the left. Turn and look out over your right shoulder. And as you're looking out over your right shoulder, you're gonna lift and lower your chin. Breathing in and breathing out as you do. Nice. Inhaling and exhaling at a rate that feels comfortable so you don't have to breathe in when you lift or breathe out when you lift. It's just this smooth, comfortable breath, this roundness to the breath. And then we'll lift, a, lift the head back to that center position, turn the head back. Sweep that right arm around and behind your back. <clears throat> when it gets behind your back, grab hold of your hand with your left hand, and then see if you can maybe work your way up to your wrist a little bit here. Pull that arm over to the left a bit. And if you're leaning into that side, see if you can sit up nice and tall, that can be a little bit of a challenge. Good. And now keep your, um, your nose facing forward, and you're gonna drop your left ear to your left shoulder and lift and lower that head a few times. So your nose faces forward and you're just bringing your ear to your shoulder. Side of the neck can get super tight for many of us. I hold a lot of tension in my neck, so I'm one of those neck people. I know what that's like. And the next time you have your left ear on your left shoulder, you're gonna hang out here. Breathe in, breathe out. And as you keep your ear close to your shoulder, see if you can turn your nose down toward the floor and then up toward the ceiling. So it's like you're saying no. So there's just this little rotation while your neck is on a stretch. Good. And one more time. Bringing your head back to sort of that center place. Lift your ear off your shoulder. We're gonna release that right arm, sweep it forward, bring it all the way up overhead, reach up as high as you can, and then bend your elbow and place your hand on your shoulder. Like you're gonna pat yourself on the back right there. Place your hand on your shoulder. If it doesn't get, if your hand doesn't get as far down as your shoulder, you can place it on your head um, anywhere that feels comfortable. And now we're gonna lift that elbow and then lower the elbow, but keep the hand on the shoulder. So lift and lower. Don't let your hand slide on your shoulder. Keep it right where it is, right? Good, breathe in, breathe out. Excellent. Two more times, lifting and lowering. Great. And then you can release and relax that. Let both arms hang down by your sides. Close your eyes for a moment. Breathe in, breathe out, and notice, does your right arm feel longer than your left arm? Just notice what that feels like. All right, let your eyes drift open. Take your left arm, sweep it over to the right. Take your right hand and pull that arm across your body. We're gonna do the same thing on this side that we did on the other. You're gonna look out over your left shoulder this time, breathing in and breathing out. Good. Can lift and lower your chin. Excellent. Keep the breath moving free and stable and steady. Excellent. And then bring your head back to center. Release that left arm. Sweep it around behind your back. As you sweep the arm behind your back, take your right hand, grab hold of the left hand, the wrist, maybe walk it up a little higher than that. Notice if you're leaning. So I, I know I have a tendency to, I'm exaggerating, but I have a tendency to kind of lean to that side, see if I can get that arm over a little bit more. So I wanna sit up as tall as I can. Maybe the arm doesn't go as far over and that's okay. And now we're gonna drop the right ear to the right shoulder and lift and lower a few times. Keep your nose facing forward though. So in other words, don't look down at the floor. You wanna have your nose facing forward because what we're trying to do is isolate the stretch 
into this left side of the neck from the shoulder up into the head. If I turn my head, I am actually stretching some different muscles. And chances are, if it's more comfortable to turn my head, that means those muscles are already stretching and the ones that need the stretch are not getting it. Next time that your ear is on your shoulder, let's hold here and breathe. So as you're holding here and breathing, relax the tension in that left side. Keep the ear as close to the shoulder as you can and we're gonna turn the nose down toward the floor and then up toward the ceiling. So it's just this really slow, easy movement. Breathing in and breathing out. It's, it's like a no, right? So I'm moving my head like I'm saying no. Couple more. And last one. And then we're gonna slowly bring the head back to that neutral position. Release your left arm, sweep it up overhead. Bend your elbow. See if you can place your hand on your shoulder. So again, like you're trying to give yourself a little pat on the back. And if your arm doesn't get that high, if you, again, if you've got something going on with the shoulder, don't worry about it. Just lift it as high as you can. And now we're going to lift that elbow as high as we can and then let it come down. Keeping the hand on the shoulder. Don't let your hand slide on your shoulder as you lift and lower. Very slow, controlled movements. So here's the thing though. I've said this before, the shoulder joints, this is the most mobile joint in your body. I mean, you can, we can do all kinds of um, rotations and extensions um, and movements with this joint that we can't do with other joints. And therefore it's a little more susceptible to injury. But we rarely injure ourselves in a vulnerable joint like this if we're doing slow controlled movements. If I'm really conscious about what I'm doing, when I lift, I don't get into a place where I'm in pain. And how about just one more time lifting and lowering you guys? Good. And then we can release that arm. Let both arms hang down by your sides. If you'd like, close your eyes. Breathe in, let it out with a sigh. And once again, just noticing the sensations in your hands and fingers, your arms, your shoulders. Notice if the right side and left side feel equal or a little more even than they were before and then let your eyes gently open. So just sort of returning to what I was saying about the shoulders. So um, oftentimes we'll injure our shoulders or our neck or our back when we do something quick. You know, I turn to grab something, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of twisted, I'm reaching down, I'm doing something and I'm not really thinking about it. So in, with our yoga practice, what we're really trying to do through using the breath, letting that breath be round and smooth, and then doing the movements in a really slow, controlled way. We're, we're retraining our brains to accept the level of, um, of movement that we have in those joints. And oftentimes, it's more than we think, right? So if, if I've injured myself because I've twisted and done something in a non-conscious way, I'm gonna be in protect mode mentally, and that's gonna put my body in protect mode until I get into a movement where I'm retraining my brain. Oh, I really do have this range available to me. So I'm gonna do this a little bit more. So working with that same principle, again, shoulders, super important to get as much movement um, daily as we can in these joints, because what we don't use on a regular basis, we will lose. So I'm gonna um, ask you to take your arms and extend them way up overhead. Reach, 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 reach. Palms are facing forward. Now squeeze your shoulder blades together and see if you can Bring the hands way behind you so you'll feel your upper back bend a little bit. Now, you don't want to lift your chin too far. You can lift a little bit, but try not to lift too far. And now imagine that there's a beach ball sitting on your lap, and we're going to come forward with the arms and hook them over the beach ball, right? So we're lifting up over the beach ball. This is a huge beach ball. And then we're going to come all the way back up. So breathe in and breathe out. So we're hugging the beach ball, and then we're coming all the way back up. Inhale, exhale. Slow, steady movements. Great. Just a couple more of these, keeping those arms really lifted if you can. This is a lot. We're asking the shoulders to do an awful lot. And one more time forward, and then we're going to finish on the extension. Ah, and then release the arms. Let them come all the way down. Let your hands rest on your lap. Wow. Take a moment and feel your shoulders. Let's 
roll them forward, up, back, and down a couple of times, or back, forward, and down a couple of times. So whatever feels good. Maybe rotate the shoulders in a syncopated way, right? So we're rotating one shoulder and then the other. And then relax and release that. Okay. Shifting attention now to the neck. So neck is another place where we hold an awful lot of tension. We've done some work on the neck when we had the ear on the shoulder and turning the head. So we're gonna go forward and back a little bit here. So let's drop the chin down to the chest. And imagine you've got a grape between your chest and your chin and you wanna hold the grape in place. So you've gotta really get that chin as close to the chest as you can. Now, in order to get the chin as close to the chest as you can, you need to release the tension in the upper back between the shoulder blades. Release the tension in your hands and your arms. Release the tension in your jaw. And now lift your head up so that it's level. So we're not gonna tilt the chin up because most of us have, spend too much time like this. So we're gonna keep the chin kind of level with the floor. Imagine if you have a book on your head, so you've gotta keep that level. Now take your right fingertip, your forefinger, put it right on your chin. Now with your finger, your finger is kind of your guide. You're gonna push back, like you're trying to press the back of your head toward the wall behind you, like you're trying to create a double chin here. So we're pushing back, pushing back, pushing back, and then release your hand and let your head just kind of spring back to that neutral position. So once again, fingertip right here on the chin, and we're gonna push back, push back, push back, and release. Breathe in, breathe out. We're gonna do this a few more times. So this is a way to stretch the neck that doesn't create tension, or, or um, contracture, rather, in another part of the neck. So a couple more times. Great, and last one. Press, 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 and release. Good. Breathing in and breathing out. We're just gonna turn the head to the right as far as it'll go. Come back through center, turn the head to the left. So we're gonna do this a few times. This is like a really big slow motion no. Right, so it's a really big slow motion no. Inhale and exhale as feels comfortable for you. Great, just two more times. Okay, coming back to that neutral position. Let's take the palms of the hands together. Now interlace your fingers. Notice the, the uh, method that you've used to cross your fingers, like which thumb is on the top. That's sort of your dominant way of holding your hands. We're gonna press the palms away and stretch through the heels of the hands. Really round through the upper back, bring the chin to the chest, breathe in, breathe out and then come all the way up overhead and release the hands, bring them all the way back down around. We're gonna come right back to that position again, interlacing the opposite way. So whichever thumb was on the top before is now on the bottom. We're gonna press out, drop the chin to the chest, breathe in, breathe out, all the way up, arms out to the sides, all the way down. So the breath is smooth. We're just gonna continue this movement, alternating the way that you're crossing your hands, that you're interlacing your hands rather. Exhaling as you come out to the side. Great, breathing in as you interlace, breathing out as you press the palms away, breathing in as the arms come up overhead, breathing out as the arms come out down and around. So let's see if we can continue with this movement of the arms. And we're gonna add a little bit of a bend forward at the hips, okay? So you have your feet maybe um, eight or 10 inches apart. Breathing in, arms come up. Now, as you breathe out and the arms come out to the side, you're gonna hinge forward from the hips and bring your arms down like you could sweep the floor, gather them together, come all the way up. Breathing out, press the palms away. Breathe in, up overhead. Breathe out, arms come out to the sides, hinge forward from your hips, sweep the floor. As you breathe in, come all the way up, interlace your hands. Breathe out, press the palms away. Breathe in, arms up overhead. Breathe out, arms come out. We're gonna hinge forward two more times, you guys. Interlacing the hands, lifting up so that it's, an, it's the opposite way 
each time that we do this, you're interlacing your hands in the opposite way. Good. And last time, so we're interlacing in that opposite way, lengthening through the spine, breathing out as we bring the arms forward. Come all the way up. We're going to hinge forward as we sweep the arms out to the side. And then let's come right up, interlace the fingers. Pause here for a moment. Relax your arms and shoulders. Close your eyes. Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, release your hands. Open your eyes. Um, so let's take the right leg. We're going to lift the right foot off the floor. Lift as high as you can and then lower down. Same thing on the left side. So let's go from side to side. Couple things you want to notice. As you lift one leg, are you leaning to one side to get that leg to lift? Can you sit up really tall? Doesn't matter how high you lift the foot off the floor. Might be a half inch, might be six inches, right? So we're just going from side to side, keeping the body as straight as we can and breathing smoothly, right? So if I'm holding my breath while I'm trying to lift, I'm creating more tension in the body and I'm also putting a load on the nervous system. And let's face it, our nervous systems don't need any more load than what they've got. We got enough to make us anxious going on in the world around us. The last thing we need to do is do a yoga class where we're creating more tension and more anxiety in the body. So just a couple more of these where we're lifting and lowering. Nice and easy. Great, last time on each side. Excellent, okay. So now we're gonna do that same movement, just lifting and lowering one foot and then the other. We're gonna add the arms. So if you kind of take your arms to a neutral position, so elbows are bent, uh, hands are about shoulder height, maybe a little bit higher. As you lift your right knee, you're gonna lift your left arm and then lower down as you lift your left knee, lift your right arm. So we're just going back and forth. Just a little bit of a marching in place, right? So slow and steady. Notice how you're using your body to get the arm and the leg up. And the slower you go, the more muscles you need to use, which means you're gonna get stronger, which is a good thing. Right, so instead of relying on momentum, getting the arm and the leg up, we're relying on the muscles to get the arm and the leg up. One more time on each side. And last one. Great, let your hands rest on your lap. Close your eyes for a moment and notice. Notice your heart rate. Notice the rate of your breath. Notice your arms, notice your legs. Okay, let your eyes open. Okay, so instead of lifting one leg straight up or, or rather um, uh, lifting one knee straight up and then the other, now what we're going to do is we're going to extend one leg and bend and extend the other and bend. And notice if you can keep your spine nice and straight again. So as you're extending at the knee and then bending at the knee, you're using the muscles in the upper leg. When you extend, you're using the muscles here in the top, the front of the thigh. Those are your quadriceps muscles. When you bend, you're using the muscles in the back of the thigh. Those are your hamstring muscles, right? So we're using a little bit of both. So you're breathing in and breathing out. If you need to take a little break, you can take a little break. We're gonna do two more on each side. And that is one on each side. And last one, great. Okay, so we've done that extension and bending in each leg. We're gonna add the arms now, but I'd like to try the arms alone first because this is a little bit trickier than just raising and lowering. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have, let's have the right arm forward with the uh, palm facing out. And then the left arm, um, make like a light fist and kind of pull back a little bit, right? Okay, and now let's just switch. So we're gonna pull back with the right and extend with the left and pull back. Good, and we're just going from side to side. So we're pressing out when the arm comes forward, we press out through the heel of the hand. When the arm comes back, we have this light fist and we're pulling that fist back as far as it'll go. Now, some of you might feel a little bit of a twist in your spine and that's a good thing if that feels okay. See if you can get a little bit of a twist in the spine. Breathe in, breathe out. Nice and slow. Great. Okie doke. 
Let's release that last time. Good. Okay, now for the tricky part. We're gonna coordinate the legs and the arms and they're gonna be in opposites, just like we did when we were lifting the foot off the floor and lifting the arms up. So let's start by extending the right leg. We're gonna extend the left arm, pull the right arm back. And now as you drop your right foot to the floor and extend your left, we're gonna extend the right arm and pull the left arm back. So let's go back and forth, breathing in and breathing out. Sit up really tall in your chair, use your belly, Use your thigh muscles, use your arms and shoulders, use your breath. Now, if this feels like it's too much, you can go just to the legs. So especially if it feels like your heart rate or your breathing is getting a little bit much, just go back to the legs, like what I'm doing right here. Otherwise, let's see if we can keep this going, right? So let's see if we can do three more times on each side. There's one and two and three excellent let your hands rest on your lap close your eyes for a moment take a breath in let it out with a sigh <sighs> take some breaths and notice notice your physical body notice where you're holding tension and then we'll take a moment, you can reorient yourself in your, in your chair on your seat so that you're comfortable. If you wanna sit back into your chair, you can do that at this point. If you'd rather stay up close to the front edge of your chair, you can do that too. But we're gonna try and create some ease in the body. And the muscles in the neck and the shoulders are relaxed and letting go. And the muscles around the jaw and the eyes Relax your chest and your back. Relax your arms, your elbows, your forearms, your hands, your wrists. Relax all your fingers and relax your thumbs. Relax your chest and your back, your belly and your low back. Relax your hips your thighs, your knees, your lower legs, ankles, your feet, your toes. Feel your body relaxed from head to toe. And turn your attention to your breath and notice how your breath is moving in and out of your body and specifically in that place up near your collarbones where we were focusing at the beginning of our session. As you inhale and exhale, see if you can feel the body rising and falling up here. See if you can feel movement, the expansion and contraction of the tissue, the muscles, the bones in that area. Yes, your bones definitely expand and contract with each breath in and out. And notice where else you feel your body moving as you breathe. So it's not just this part of the body up by the collarbones, but maybe it's the belly or the rib cage. Maybe it's the sides of the waist or the tops of the shoulders even. Maybe you feel your body lifting and lowering in that shoulder region. And then coming back to your thoughts, Shifting awareness to the mind and all the activity in the mind this morning. Notice if there are many thoughts or just a few. Maybe there's one that's a little bit stuck in there. And again, notice the quality of your thoughts. Are they deep and philosophical? Or are they kind of light and laundry list kinds of thoughts? And go back to your breath and notice. Is your breath shallow or deep? Is it fast or slow? Is there a different quality to your breath now than there was at the beginning of the session? And your physical body, where there's tension, where there's ease, 
and how you can create more ease in those areas that are tense. And then simultaneously knowing, noticing the breath, the physical body, and the mind. It's through conscious awareness that you can release the tension in your muscles. Through conscious awareness, you can release the tension in your breathing so that it becomes longer, slower, and deeper. Through conscious awareness, you can release the hold on your thoughts, allowing them to move freely. No judgment about your thoughts, no attachment to your thoughts. The mind is going to try and capture your attention. It's going to try and get you to do something that is not quite as boring as just sitting here watching your breath. But the reality is the mind is always going to have those little antics to try and distract you. And the job in a simple breathing meditation like this one is to simply witness the thoughts, acknowledge them, and then move your awareness back to your breath. So we can acknowledge that we're having a thought without grasping that thought. We can acknowledge the activity in the mind without becoming confused and muddled that we are what's going on in our mind because we're not, we're way more than that. The activity in the mind right now is like an electrical storm. Right, so there's all these synapses that are firing up there. So just like you wouldn't try and corral a lightning bolt, you wouldn't really want to try and corral your thoughts. Just let them go. Just witness. And like it's safe to witness a lightning storm from far away, it's safe to create some space between yourself and your thoughts just watching as if it were a lightning storm going on off in the distance. And shifting awareness equally and evenly between the breath, the body, and the mind. Using one as an anchor point, moving to the next. Take one of your hands and place it at the center of your chest and then take your other hand and cover that first hand. Breathe in and out to the space underneath your hands. Take one more breath in and let it go with a sigh. <sighs> And then take a moment and bring your hands together in whatever expression of gratitude feels right for you this morning, maybe bowing your head for a moment and just considering all the gifts you have in your life, those things that you can be grateful for, the gifts that you worked hard for, the achievements, and the things that were given to you without your effort. Accept them both equally. And letting your eyes open gradually in gratitude to all of you for being with me today. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day.